Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ask Amber and today is the long awaited day. I am going to show you how to add emotes to your 3.0 avatar. So let's get started. Now before we do anything else, let's open up our playable layers. And today we're gonna to be working with the action layer. So the good thing about the VRC SDK is that if you open up the folders and you go into examples three, and animation, you can actually look up controllers that VRChat already has set up for you. So these are included with the SDK, so you can totally just use these if you'd like. I'm gonna start out with one, and this one is the action layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that, and I'm gonna rename it action layer. Then I'm gonna go ahead and move this into my personal animations folder under animation controllers. And then when I go into my animation controllers, there it is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this to open up my full action layer. Now this is very intimidating looking, I know, but really because VRChat has already set up everything that you need for it, it's actually really easy to do. Now I'm gonna change some things in this layer so that we can get our emotes working the way we like. So to add standard emotes, like you would in VRChat SDK 2, you don't actually have to add any parameters because VRChat already sets up emote parameters for this action layer for you. So luckily you don't have to do anything like that. I'm gonna show you how to change these out and it's really simple. All of these little boxes represent an action that happens. And so it goes from standing to one of these depending on which one you click. And it goes from sitting to one of these, depending on which one you click. And I'm going to leave all the sitting ones alone, but we're going to work on the standing one. I actually really like the new die and get up animation that they have. So I'm going to leave those there and I'm just going to add animations on these ones. Although you are more than welcome to change this as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on this first one and it'll open up this window in the inspector and it'll ask you for a motion. And now this is just where you're going to put your animation. So I'm going to go ahead and add twerk2 as my animation, and I'm going to rename this. You don't have to rename it if you don't want to. It's not necessary. It's just for my own organization. And there, that's renamed. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for all the rest of these, adding in my animations that I learned. So now that you've added all of the animations into these little boxes, we're going to work on these arrows. When you click the arrow between your animation, and the blend out, which is basically the ending. It'll come up with a different screen in the inspector. And there's this little checkbox called has exit time. Now we're gonna set these all up as buttons in your menu. So if you want your avatar to do your email in full after you just tap the button once, then make sure that this is checked. But however, I like to uncheck mine because that means that as long as I'm holding down the button with my thumb, or if you're clicking down on the button in desktop mode, then it will play for as long as the animation is, as long as you're holding the button. So let's say you want something to stop after like 10 seconds, you can just hold down the button for 10 seconds and then stop and it'll stop your animation. And that's actually really helpful because sometimes I don't want to play my entire animation all the way through. I just kind of want to, you know, do a meme or something and show somebody and get a laugh out of it. And then it's done. And if it keeps playing, then it can be annoying. So I like to uncheck all of mine so that it makes sure that there is no exit time. So it will only play as long as I hold it down. Okay, now that that is all set up, we're going to add this controller to our avatar descriptor. So all you have to do is take this action layer that you just made and drag it into the action layer. If it still has the button on there, just click the button and then drag it onto your action layer, just like that. But we're not quite done yet because we still have to add these emotes to our menu. So let's go back to our menus folder that I created in the last video. If you don't know about menus and parameters, make sure you go back and check my other videos because I go over those in detail. This is just how we're adding animations to those things and making them all work together. So in my parameters, you see I already have VRC emote, which is built in. They already include that when you make your parameters tab, and that's the one that we're going to be using. When you click on each one of these, you see there's an arrow from the starting to whichever emote you want to play. So when you click on this, you see 
in here that th this will play when it equals one. And then you go down to the next one and you see this one will play when it equals two. This one will play with three, so on and so forth, all the way down to eight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our top level menu, and this is where we're going to add our emotes. Now you can just add all of your emotes into your top level menu. And when you click on the expressions in your radio menu, when you open up VR chat, it will show you all of your emotes. But let's say you wanted a section for emotes and you wanted a section for clothing changes or color changes or things like that. So then you would need a sub menu. So when you click on the top menu, you would see emotes and clothing and color changes. And then you would click on emotes and then all of your emotes would be inside. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to duplicate this top level menu and we're going to name this emote. Now this is still a menu, same as your top level menu, but I'm going to show you how to make a sub menu. So you click on your top level menu, you're going to add a control. And when you add a control, this is going to be the button that you press. And for the type, you're going to click submenu. Then you just choose a name for it, which this is obviously a submenu full of emotes. So we're going to say that it's emotes. For the icon, we're going to do a little dancing guy. It's pretty good. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I do have an icon pack that you guys are welcome to download on my website. I will link it below. For your parameter, you can leave that empty. And then what you're going to do is you're going to drag your emotes menu into this submenu section. And that's it for that. So now when you open your menu, this will just lead straight into this, which has nothing in it quite yet, but we're about to set that up. So that's how you add a sub menu. This will be your top level menu, which you always should call top level or something that you can remember that that is the top menu. So that if you add other sub menus in here, you're not adding them into a different menu that you didn't plan on adding them to. So now for emotes, what we're going to do is we're going to add a control for the first one. And we're going to look in here. This is why I like to rename it because it makes my life easier. I'm going to name this the first emote name. And we're going to add a little icon for that. We're going to make sure that the type is button. That way you can get that effect where as long as you hold it down, it'll keep playing. The parameter is the VRC emote that is already built in that I showed you in the parameters list. And then for this one, the value is going to be one. And remember how when we went in here, let me just click on it for you. When we went in here, you could see that this emote equals one and you want that to match with what's in your button. So this value is going to be one with the VRC parameter. Now we're going to add another control Call this one, whatever it is, the next emote down, which is torque three, add an icon, make sure it's button. The parameter is the same VRC emote integer. But this time we're going to change the value to two because we know that this value of this one is two. And we're just going to do that for every single one going all the way down, even for the die. And we're going to have all of our emotes in this menu. And now that I've added all of my emotes into this menu, and I have my top level menu with the sub menu ready to go into that. All of my emotes are ready to play. And when I upload this into VR chat, it will actually play these from your radial menu and you are all ready to go. If you want to add audio to one of these emotes, it's actually really simple. I suggest you go and watch my other video on 2.0 animation on how to add audio and music because that might help with this one. It's basically the same process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my main scene and I'm going to create an animation controller. And this is just going to be temporary. I'm just going to call it audio. I'm going to click on my avatar and in my animator section, I'm going to add this audio because you need to have your, an animation on your avatar in order to edit it. And so I'm just going to temporarily put this on here. Please do not upload your avatar with this on here. You'll need to delete this before you upload your avatar. But this is just for changing the actual animation on your avatar. So in audio, I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to go into my animations folder and into my anim files and into my dances. And I'm going to click the ones that I added. So I added follow the leader and I added toxic and I added swalla. So now I can go back into my scene and I can click on my avatar, duplicate it, hide the original avatar, just like I'm creating an animation. 
And I'm going to go into the animation tab and make sure that I can actually edit these animations. And I should be able to. Once you have that set up, you're going to go into your armature and your hips and you're going to right click and you're going to create an audio source. And this audio source I'm going to call the same name as my first animation. And in the audio clip area, I'm going to drag my music file into the audio clip. I'm going to put my priority as all the way high. In my 3D sound settings, I'm going to put my max distance at 20. And then I'm going to duplicate this twice because I have two more songs that I want. This one I'm going to call Follow the Leader. And I'm going to change this one to Follow the Leader. And this one I'm going to change to Toxic and change the sound source to Toxic. Now that I have those on there, I'm going to go ahead and close this up and I am ready to edit my animations. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this, hide the original avatar, click on the second avatar and go into my animation tab. And as you can see in here, I've actually already set up this, but I'm going to show you how to set it up in case yours is not there. And so on the follow the leader animation, what I'm going to do is add property and I'm going to go into my armature, into my hips, find that audio source, follow the leader, and I'm going to click the little plus button next to is active and make sure that's checked. Great. Now you can exit back out into your project settings. Go ahead and delete this duplicate that you just made. Turn this duplicate back on and then you're going to toggle this down and you're going to make all three of these musics the game object inactive by clicking that check mark. That way they're not playing always, they only play when your animation is playing. So when you toggle in your new menu that you just made, your animation, it's going to play this along with your animation. It's very, very similar to 2.0 avatars. It's just a little bit uh, different on how you add the actual animation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my main avatar and I'm going to make sure I delete this controller out of here because you want this to be none because with your avatar descriptor you don't want any animator controller in here that was just so that we could edit the animations and somehow deleting that made my game objects active again so i'm just going to make sure those are inactive and there you go now when you play your song in vr chat it will play the audio along with it stay tuned for my next video where i'm going to go over how to add facial expressions and gestures along with uh, different hand shapes and things like that so stay tuned for that. Turn that little bell on and subscribe so you never miss one of my videos. Thanks for watching.